Welcome to Will It Build, the series where I take your builds from my YouTube comments and Discord server and put them to the test to see if they are the real deal. If it's solid, then I'll gift you 1,000 silver. And if it's really something special, you'll be featured in a dedicated build video for your submitted build. So comment yours below so we can answer the question, will it build? Hey, G-Miners, new build. What do you think? Oh, very nice. Look at that. Just picked it up from the Discord yesterday. Good exotic armor piece. That's Caliban's hand, and the exotic heavy weapon is something called Dragon's Breath. Welcome back to another Will of Build. Today, I've got a Solar Hunter one that is claimed to be a jumpy Oppenheimer that will create many nukes on the battle... Uh, sorry, on the battlefield. I'm laughing too much for that intro. The main stat should be resilience along with strength and mobility, and the rest of it kind of spoke for itself. They said the subclass element is solar. The exotic armor is Caliban's hand. For aspects, we're going with Gunpowder Gamble and Knock Him Down. However, they said you can swap out on your mark for Gunpowder Gamble instead if you'd like. I'm going to go with their recommendation, so I'm going to go ahead and start out with Gunpowder Gamble and knock them down. They don't specify what your base abilities are going to be, but I am assuming that the best options here would be to probably go with Blade Barrage, Gambler's Dodge to get your melee ability back. I like Triple Jump the most, and then generally speaking, I like Healing Grenade the most on Solar Hunter. If you like a Damage Grenade instead, you'd probably want to go with something like Fusion. And then for the melee ability, if I recall correctly, I think for Caliban's hand, you specifically have to use Proximity Knife. As you can see right here, your Proximity Knife scorches targets it damages with its explosions or ignites targets on final blow. Additionally, after throwing a Proximity Knife, you gain increased melee regeneration until the knife explodes. So we're obviously gonna be going with Proximity Knife here since all of Caliban's hand's benefits are going to be derived from the Proximity Explosive Knife. As far as the rest of our build goes, they have a setup with the Embers of Torches, Empyrean, Eruption, and Sinjin, and optionally Searing in the fifth slot if you're using On Your Mark, since that does give three Fragment slots as opposed to the two that Gunpowder Gamble gives. So Torches, Empyrean, Eruption, and Sinjin. So since we're using Dragon's Breath, I'm wondering now if we actually want to try and figure out a way to get the Ember of Ashes into one of our Fragment slots, because Ember of Ashes increases all of our Scorch stack applications by 50%, which includes the Dragon's Breath. As you can see down here in the Intrinsic Trait Composite Propellant, uh, rockets embed themselves in struck targets and periodically eject incendiary fuel that inflicts Scorch. So the reason it's important that we want a bonus 50% of all Scorch stack applications is because not only is that going to make this rocket do a lot more damage, but it's going to more quickly proc the high octane perk where igniting nearby targets will partially replenish fuel. Right out the gate, I'm wondering if we're going to want to find a way to incorporate the embers of searing or ashes somewhere in here. I'm not sure which fragments we would take out, but... We'll figure it out as we go. Um, as far as the weapons go, they highly recommended a solar weapon with either Pugilist or Incandescent. As you can see here on the Zally's Bane, you're able to have both. I have Enhanced Pugilist, which will give us melee ability energy when we get final blows with the weapon. And Incandescent is a no-brainer. Everyone knows what it does. Inflicts Scorch whenever you get a final blow with the weapon. So both great traits to have right there. I'm going with a disorienting grenade launcher. It's just typically my bread and butter when it comes to any loadout where I'm giving where I'm giving freedom with what uh, weapons I can run. They didn't specify that I'd use this, so you can use whatever you want in this section. As far as mods go, they hooked us up with a harmonic siphon, heavy ammo finder, and hands on on the helmet, which all makes perfect sense to me. On the gloves, I love the heavy handed. However, they hooked us up with a bolstering detonation and a focusing strike, which grants class ability energy when we cause damage with the powered melee attack. All good with this. But for bolstering detonation, they did say that we could instead rock with a harmonic loader instead, which considering that we're using a Zally's Bane, which is not typically a weapon that gets reloaded particularly quickly, I would actually love to go with a harmonic loader instead, not only because I want to reload that Zally's Bane more quickly, but because with bolstering detonation, we need to cause damage with the grenade to refund our class ability. And I don't really want to use a damage grenade. With Ember of Empyrean, having the healing grenade is a great way to give us restoration initially, which we can then extend with all of the solar final blows that we'll be getting through the Ember of Empyrean. So I really do want to stick on that healing grenade, not really go towards a damage grenade, at least for Legend Onslaught. In the chest piece, they didn't specify anything, so we'll just go with resistances. On the boots, they urge us towards solar weapon surge, absolution, and recuperation. Not sure how necessary recuperation is going to be with the healing grenade and restoration extension 
suspension from Ember and Empyrean, but we'll see how it goes. And then on the class ability, Navis with Time Dilation, Powerful Attraction, and Outreach. Um, I feel like it's always not the best situation to omit Reaper from any Hunter build or really any build in general. It's just that strong of a mod. But also, I feel like Outreach is completely useless because whilst it reduces our melee cooldown when we're using our class ability, if we're using Gambler's Dodge, then we get the full melee ability back whenever we use our class ability, at least if it's next to an enemy. So I'm going to do one of those rare situations where I actually omit a mod right from the gate. I'm not even going to give it a chance. Um, and I'm going to squeak Reaper in there, like I said, because I just think it's that good of a mod. And I think we really do want to have Reaper um, with this build. It's just too good on any Hunter build to pass up. And like we said, Outreach is just not going to bring that much to the table for us. With all that being said, I've got a uh, tech from my live stream, twitch.tv slash where we film all these live. And actually another content creator g miners who's an awesome dude he's going to be chilling with us while we go through this willow build trying something a little new and getting some other voices in here just to you know see how it goes so um let's hop into legend onslaught and answer that question will it build so right out the gate i'm gonna throw the throwing knife that's gonna hit that servitor explode um doesn't really look like it's doing anything crazy quite yet we can go ahead and hit a dodge that'll give us our throwing knife back so we can give it another try i feel like I'm gonna put it right there. Okay, so far I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, but feeling very lackluster on the throwing knife department. I don't do I need to like only I don't know if I only need to use it on squishy red bars, if I have to get the enemy super weak before I throw it at the enemy, but right now, not so sure about it. Okay, um, yeah, still nothing crazy. You have to hit the enemies with the knife? I feel like I did just hit that enemy with the knife, no? I feel like I chucked it right in his face. Here, I'll chuck. Oh, I got my knife back right there. Oh, which remember from the knock them down aspect, not only is that going to make our blade barrage significantly better, but anytime we get a final blow with our throwing knife, that's going to uh, fully refund our throwing knife. So that's definitely going to be a big part. So yeah, I think it's super important to make sure that your throwing knife actually gets the final blow. I think it's a perfect time to introduce my buddy G Miners, a fellow build crafter. I'm having a tough time with this one, G. It got Caliban's hand going right now, and I. I, I feel I always see everyone talking good about Caliban's hand, but I feel like I'm misusing it because I'm I'm not seeing the beauty of it right now. Can you enlighten me? Dude, I don't my my take with Caliban's it's a great exotic, but we're under power. I think we're well, we're minus five right now. Uh-huh. So I feel like the prox knife just kind of suffers. Okay. And I also am pretty sure ignition wise, it scales like the damage of ignitions and scorch scales off of the source. So when I you say when you say the source, you mean the source of the thing that creates the ignition? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, whatever. I'm pretty sure whatever. Uh, what's a good example? Like if you're using Verities and you throw a fusion and you cause an ignition with Verities Brow at, at a higher damage value, your ignition will then hit super harder. Gotcha. With like you know increased in just because your source of what is causing the ignition and the scorch at first is dealing more damage at base. So. And you're saying since uh, Proximity okay. Knife has a lower base damage value, it's ignition values that scale with the base damage value are not going to be quite as potent as something that would be a little higher. Yeah. Okay. That's been my take on it. I've seen some people say it's really good for this, but the other hard part is if you throw it down, I don't... Ignitions can be weird. It's kind of the same thing with like, what is this, Sunbracer Snaps, where if it ignites something, you might not get credit for the kill. So right. just like burn your nade or burn your knife and then you don't get it back. Mm -hmm. I mean, luckily, I've got the Ember of Sinjin right now, um, so anytime I score something, which since my primary is incandescent, it's pretty frequent, um, I get my class ability regeneration gets juiced, and my class ability is obviously Gambler's Dodge, so I pretty much always have that up so I can at least get my knife back, but like, okay, I don't so know. More aggressive with it. Yeah. When you do actually get the final blows with the throwing knife, it actually seems pretty decent because with knock them down when you're radiant you of course get your melee ability fully refunded whenever you get the final blow with your melee ability um yeah. which now that i'm saying that i previously said that i'm not sure how i feel about ember of torches 
um because there's so many ways to get radiant this season or rather the flint striker seasonal mod makes it so easy to get radiant um but consider it looking at it through the lens of um ember of torches i'm wondering if it's gonna be a lot better to actually keep ember of torches i wanted to try to find a way to maybe get like the ember of ashes somewhere into my build because i'm using dragon's breath um and i feel like that's well, that's like a match made in heaven you know what i mean so i'm getting the well right out of the gate i'm just gonna try i completely missed my dragon's breath so that's perfect i mean i need to get dragon's breath on that guy yeah, i'm just gonna let the damage do its thing i'm getting this well real quick too so i uh, get some damage on those servitors and we're gonna see how quick my Dragon's Breath will reload itself, because it should reload itself whenever we ignite the boss. My Blade Barrage could have played a role in that, though. If I shoot that right there, I'm just gonna listen for it. There it is. I just heard it. Oh, never mind. That. Oh, what I heard was the auto loading from my disorienting grenade launcher, is what I heard there. I wouldn't say. I mean, like, it, it's always gonna be tough to compare damage on bosses, especially when you're with teammates, and obviously the bosses are different. So, like, we have the Vandal right there. If we, for example, get like the Brig on the next wave, at different health pools. But you know, for the most part, I I think we'll have an idea of like how our solar stuff is feeling. So I think right now I'm gonna go ahead and make the switch from eruption to ashes. Like we said, eruption only increases solar ignitions by 20%. And I know it gives us a 10 strength boost, but I'm not really concerned about that considering that we're always refunding our knife if we get a final blow with it. And if we don't, we're always refunding it through gambler's dodge, not necessarily through passive regeneration. So I don't really care that much about the strength. I'm gonna go ahead with ashes. I'm just gonna see how that performs and see how it feels. I'm loving Incandescent on the Zally's Bane as well because it's always, it means basically every single weapon kill is going to scorch enemies and proc that Ember of Sinjin to get us our class ability back, which is super important when um, you consider that's Gambler's Dodge and it's going to refund our melee ability for free. That seems like kind of what the entire build revolves around is making sure that our class ability is always up, that kind of contingency plan if we mess up our knife and we lose it. So let's get a throwing knife on that servitor right there. Not servitor, heavy shank. Um, and it seemed like it did okay damage, but um, I didn't get the final blow with it, which means it's gone. Not a huge problem, because I'm gonna scorch everything. There's my class ability back right there. Hit a quick little dodge and my knife is back. I'm just gonna kind of chuck it in there. It seems tough to get a final blow with it. Okay, so squish your enemies. I'm going to throw that knife. I still didn't get the melee ability regeneration, though, which is weird to me. I'm just getting a little... Con I, I just... I don't... I hear people talk up Caliban's hand all the time. I don't know if I'm just not... I don't know if I'm just bad with it, or... It's not clicking for me at the current moment. I'm sure I can figure it out, though. It doesn't do as well in Endgame. Yeah, I'd, I feel like the entire good part of the build right now is the Zali's Bane and the Dragon's Breath. I feel like the exotic's not doing too much for me. I feel like if instead I just went ahead and threw on Shards of Galanor and switched to the Knife Trick melee ability instead of the Proximity Explosive Knife, I'd, I feel like it'd just be performing significantly better. I'd be procking Hands On more often. I'd be procking Heavy Handed more often. Um, and I wouldn't have to, you know, be so focused about, you know, only using my melee on red bars or, like, chipping away at the tankier enemies before I throw my throwing knife. Luckily, uh, luckily Pugilist is being pretty decent here. Although, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm not sure if Pugilist is actually doing anything for me on this weapon. Because whilst it does get melee ability energy back, if you guys have noticed so far in the video... I have not gotten my melee ability back one single time just from actually regenerating the melee ability from zero through just passive regeneration and small increments of melee ability refund through Pugilist. I've gotten it back every single time from dodging next to an enemy with my gambler's dodge. Oh, it has to be direct hits. Okay, hold up. Let me test that. So first things first, let me try and direct hit that guy. Boom, got it back. Now let me try and get a non-direct hit kill.
This is a tough day for me, apparently. Okay, let's see here. Oh, you know what I think it might be? What is it? I think proximity throwing knife just doesn't do enough damage to kill things. And so I think I'm killing them because it's, you know, I'm throwing it at like a, a red bar wretch or something, but it's just not killing it because it's just not doing any damage. Wait, does the thing die or does it stay alive? I know, I thought it was dying. I just assumed. I was like, oh, you're a red bar wretch. A piece of tissue paper should be able to kill you. But I, I don't think they're actually dying. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is, I, as, much, as cool as Caliban's hand looks, I think, especially as we get deeper into the Onslaught run and the enemy power levels only continue to increase, I think it's just going to continue to struggle, mainly because it's so tethered to Proximity Knife, which is just not working out really well. I just want to see how this build performs if we keep everything exactly the same, all the mods, fragments, aspects, and weapons, but just change our melee ability to Knife Trick and go ahead and slap on the Shards of Galinor. Just want to see how we're feeling if uh, if we go ahead and make those modifications. Okay, so we don't have to worry too much about the Tormentor because he's fixated on the decoy. Looks like a good Blade Barrage opportunity though. Right there, I get half of my super back. And Knife Trick, uh, you know, the damage isn't insane by any means, but it's certainly feeling a heck of a lot better than the proximity throwing knife. And the fact that I almost have my super back already, I mean, feels a lot more impactful than Caliban's hand already. Boom. Oh my god. Okay, helps to not have the worst melee ability aim in the world. Luckily, we have Gambler's Dodge, though, and we're always scorching everything, so it's pretty easy to have that class ability up. Get our melee ability back to the Ambler's Dodge. And then, oh. <laughs> G-Miners uh, just completely stole my uh, melee final blow. Uh, you should all go to his YouTube channel and unsubscribe right now. Okay, so even Knife Trick is struggling a little bit to get final blows on enemies, even Red Bar ones, um, just at, you know, this stage of Onslaught, since we are, I think we're on, like, wave 27 on Legend Onslaught. Um, just things get a little tankier as you go. But even... So, Caliban's was having that same issue, and Shards of Galnor is going to give us 50% of our super back anytime we use it, whereas Caliban's is not going to do anything close to that big of a benefit with our super usage. So, okay, let's get a Blade Barrage off real quick. That's a big Blade Barrage. Definitely going to get 50% of that one back. Get this Marauder weak. Hit him with the Throwing Knives. Get another one with our Throwing Knives. Get another one with our throwing knives. Get another one with our... Th we have our super back already. Okay, yeah, I just... If you're going for the throwing knife to blow stuff up and give you a ton of benefits, power fantasy, throw as many nukes as possible. Blade Barrage is the biggest... Like, that's that's the biggest nuke of them all. So I feel like if that is the power fantasy that you're going for, uh, it just makes way more sense to go with a loadout that's going to get your Blade Barrage a lot more frequently and allows you a little bit more um, freedom to use whatever melee ability you want to, as opposed to something like Caliban's Hand, which forces you to use Proximity Throwing Knife, which is unfortunately absolutely horrible. Um, okay, open this wave of a, with a Blade Barrage, and I'm seeing that in the middle of a Will It Build video that we're filming live, we have a 100 gifted sub bomb. Generally speaking, I just try my best to focus on the build, uh, but, I feel like something that mo uh, monumentous deserves a thank you directly mid video to Evios Gaming with the 100 gifted subs. If you're watching this on YouTube, if you end up leaving a comment down below, include at the end of your comments, Evios is a goat. Of course, goat standing for greatest of all time, not the actual animal goat. Um, but uh, yeah, Evios, thank you so much for the 100 gifted sub bomb. That's absolutely insane. Uh, I think uh, we're gonna we're gonna dedicate the completion of this wave 50 legend onslaught to you. Thank you so much. I think uh, if I'm not mistaken, we should have a 100 sub train up at the top of my webcam. Oh, actually, no, I turned that off for video purposes, so there's not a bunch of clutter on the screen. Whoops. 
I'm not gonna lie, I, uh, I didn't realize <laughs> you died, and uh, I was not paying attention. My fault. That's My completely fault. okay. So typically, I'm the one who makes the final decree, but uh, you're a build crafter too. You're a pretty smart fella. How you, how you feeling about the the Caliban's hand versus shards of Galanora? Like, what's what's the when, where, and why? Shards versus. I mean, I like using shards in casual content. I've seen people use it in um, not shards, sorry, Caliban's in like casual content. I've seen it be really really useful for like solo explicator for ad clear and stuff back in the day. I think it's a good exotic, but I think it's definitely something that should remain in the realm of on powered content, if that makes sense. So like you're equivalent to the power level or you're over the power level. And then stuff Otherwise, where you're at minus five, track. minus 10, you know, you got Legend Onslaught, you got Master Eiffels, you got GMs. That's where you want to go a little bit more into the Shards of Galnor territory. Not that you can't use Shards of Galnor in casual content, but that's where your options are going to become a little bit more exclusive to Shards. Um, and not even necessarily from the super regeneration from melee final blows, but more so from the 50% of your blade barrage back whenever you hit like three or more targets or anything like that. Um, especially if it's tankier targets, which could be a lot more frequent and uh, higher end content, right? Right. Yeah, it's just way more versatile. 100%. Right. Absolutely. I agree. So will it build the Caliban's hand variant of it? Like G Miner said, and I totally agree with him. I think in more casual content, more on level content, where it's easier to get those final blows with the proximity throwing knife, which doesn't do a ton of damage. Yeah, I think it will totally work in a situation where you're doing maybe Legend Onslaught or you're doing literally anything that's, uh, you know, you're below power level. I think that's where you're going to find a lot more benefits and a lot more um i feel like you're going to get a lot more mileage out of something like shards of galnor so whilst i kept the mod setup mostly the same obviously we threw on that harmonic scavenger and we went with the harmonic loader instead um obviously went with reaper on the class m as well outreach not particularly important this is what we ended up with our subclass setup love the healing grenade knife trick if you're going to go with the shards of galnor if you're sticking with the caliban's hand you can go with the proximity explosive knife and then obviously swapped out the ember of eruption for ember of ashes such good synergy with uh dragon breath and like i said i think pugilist on the hand cannon is not particularly important you can totally go explosive payload in this slot or just not worry about the perk whatsoever 99 of the time you're getting your melee ability back just from using your gambler's dodge which you have up so often from the emperor of singeing procs when you scorch other targets um so pugil is not really mattering that much um i think you're totally going to be fine just with gambler's dodge you'll have your class ability up permanently so Thank you very much for the submission. It will win a thousand silver because I liked the weapon setup. I liked the mod setup and I liked the subclass setup. Um, but I think the exotic, I think we could use a little bit more tweaking. I'm not sure if someone has a Caliban's hand build that they think beats this one. For that matter, anyone who has a build that they want featured in one of these videos, make sure you submit it in the Willow Build channel in my Discord server, linked in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you so much, Evios, for the 100 gifted sub bomb in the middle of the episode. That was absolutely spectacular. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, have a great day.